This video is packed with information. Today we're gonna learn how to configure admin access to Panorama using Azure authentication and authorization. It means the Panorama is gonna take into account the group that's configured on Azure for this user trying to log in and select the correct admin role for him or her. We're gonna configure a read-only access role for a help desk user that only needs access to the panoramic traffic logs. The credentials for this help desk user, including the group, are gonna be configured in Microsoft Azure. It means even with a couple clicks, you can activate multi-factor authentication for the Panorama administration login. So let's get started. So for our configuration, we're gonna start with Azure. So in Azure, we need first to create the users and groups. So in my setup, I don't know if yours looks the same, I have to go to Manage Azure Active Directory. If I click on View, I get the option to add users and groups. So if I start with the groups first, I'm gonna choose a security group, enter the name of the group, I'm gonna call it Help Desk minus Role. I click on Create. And now if I go to add and create my user, help desk user, just for this example, display name, help desk, password, I'm gonna choose not to auto-generate, and next properties, Next assignments, add group. And I'm gonna click on my help desk row and I'm click on select. And then review and create and create. So my user and my groups have been created. Now I can go to the search and click and choose enterprise applications I already have here. And here we're gonna add a new application. Under search application, you search for Palo Alto. And we're gonna choose the Palo Alto admin user interface. Click on top of it and click on create. After it's set up, we're gonna go to assign users and groups. Click on top of it add user and groups, click on this non-selected under users and groups, I'm going to choose help desk row, help desk select and click on assign. So the next step is going to be to configure the single sign-on, for that click on single sign-on and we're going to choose XAML. Under basic XAML configuration, we need to configure our connection. Click on edit. Here on top, we need the identifier entity ID. Here you need to replace the stuff with Palo Alto admin, paloaltonetworks.com with the F FQDN that your file is reached through. So just gonna click on top of it and here comes a little field for you to enter the value. Here on the patterns, it shows the pattern but it's missing something, we need to enter HTTPS. My fire is reached through panorama.netsums.com. This is the thing that they don't show here on the pattern. You need the colon 443 slash SAML 20 slash SP. The end is just like this, this pattern. We do the same for the reply URL. HTTPS panorama net sums dot com colon four four three slash you can copy this end copy and paste and my sign on URL HTTPS panorama 
netsums.com slash and then we copy this end here also. Copy, paste. And then after that we are done. We can click on save. No test later. Just quick. The YouTube analytics show us that 93% of the people who watch this channel are not subscribers yet. If you're enjoying this video, one huge thing that you can do for us is to hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much. Now back to the video. Now under attributes and claims, we need to edit this also. This is the information that Sam is gonna send to the file. So we need to adapt this so that the group also gets sent. So we're gonna add a group claim. Now important thing about this group claim, this is very important for this configuration. If you have groups in Azure that are being synchronized to your on-premise Active Directory, I haven't tested this, but I believe you can select here security groups and you can select the same account name. The important thing in the end, the important thing is that Azure doesn't send the group ID to the file because the file cannot do anything with the group ID, but it sends the group name. You're going to see later, we're going to, we need from Azure the group name so that the file knows that it's supposed to assign this user to the group. I'm going to show you the file later, but important to know here is that we need the group name from Azure. In my case, I don't have any connection to uh, an on-premise Active Directory, so I'm going to choose the less option groups assigned to the application because here I have the option to choose cloud only group display names. With this option, Azure sends, doesn't send me the group ID, but sends me the group name. We're going to take a look later on to see what Azure sends. So I'm going to choose this one and under advanced options, under customize name of the group claim, if I don't select this, well, let's do like this before I select and click on save. And you can see here that the claim name is this thing here. And if you want to match the group that we're configuring in Azure at the file, we need to copy this whole thing. I don't want this. So in order to change this claim, claim name, just click on top of this and go to advanced options, customize, that's the option we was going to. And here under name, we can add whatever you want. So I'm just going to add group. Click on save. And you can see on the left side that this group gets changed. Now we need something else. I'm going to add a new claim. We need username. And here we're going to choose the user principal name and then click on save. So we have these two now, the group and the username. I need both of them at the file and they have now a simple claim name, let's say like this. Okay. Now the last thing is to go back to the application. Single sign on, SAML, that's where we were. You can see here the, the attributes and claims. We have now group and username. Now we can download the Federation Metadata XML. Now a panorama. I want to import, then the first thing I need to do is to import the Federation XML file. And this we're gonna do under SAML identity provider, so panorama, server profiles, SAML identity provider, and here you can click on import. XAML Azure, here on the browse, I select my file, and here I'm gonna uncheck this validate identity provider certificate, but if you're in production, I strongly suggest you to keep this on and exchange the certificates with Azure. I'm going to click on OK. Now you click on top of the imported 
profile. Here we need to change something. I'm going to leave in the description the URL that I'm using now for this identity provider SLO. This we need to change. And that's it. You can click on OK. Now we go to Authentication Profile. Click on Add. We're going to add a new SAML Authentication Profile. Type SAML. IDP server provider, SAML Azure. I want to enable single logout. That's why I entered the new, the different, the, the other URL under the SAML configuration. And here, under admin role attribute, I'm going to enter my group. So the group in Azure has to have the exact name as the admin role that we're going to create soon. And it's going to be matched through this attribute called group. Under advanced, we select all and click on OK. Now we're going to create our admin role. Click on add. And I'm going to call this help desk role. This, is, this must match the name of the group at Azure. And now we said that we wanted for the help desk only needed to see the monitor traffic logs. So I'm not going to allow dashboards. You just go click on the stuff that you don't want. Under privacy, if you don't leave this show full IP addresses and show username in logs and reports. The this the second one I think is obvious, but the first one the user only sees the networks. So if a user is coming from a network, uh, from an IP address 10.0.0.1, you're going to see at the file 10.0.0.0 slash 24 maybe, but you only see the networks. So I, if your user, if your user should see the IP address, you should leave this on. And the same here for the username. I'm going to leave this on. And the rest, we can just uncheck. So under privacy these three and under logs only the traffic logs and that's it you can click on OK and now under administrator we don't need to do anything on the, under this administrator tab there is somewhere else that you need to do is under setup and under authentication settings that's where you say to Panorama that Panorama should use this authentication profile also in order to allow users to log in. So we click on OK and let's commit our configuration. So I'm just going to make the try to make the login using Cognito so that the browser doesn't use the cookies that I already have saved in my normal browser. And you can see that in the login, the panorama shows now a use single sign-on. If I click on top of it, it gives me the option to enter an SSO account. So I'm going to enter the one that we created, help desk dash user, click on continue. So I need to enter the credentials again, click on next. Now my password, click on sign in, sign in. Here you can configure if you want multi-factor authentication, but I'm just click on ask later, stay signed in, yes. Yeah, cool, it worked. So here you just click on close. Do not show this again. Mm 
and there it is. Now we're logged in on Panorama. Under Panorama, they cannot see anything, but this option gets shown here. And you don't see anything here under, under Monitor because I don't have login configured on my Panorama. But if you're logging something, you would see here the, the logs or the help desk user. One other thing that I wanted to show you is the XAML tracer. This is a little extension from Google that shows you the XAML packets. So I'm going to leave this open and try to log in, use single sign-on. Yes. And now here, now here under the tracer, we should see on the right side a little symbol called SAML. There it is. And if we click on SAML, and if we go down, you can see all the claims that Microsoft or the attributes that Azure sends to the file. So you can see here, this is the name of the attribute, tenant ID, object identifier, display name, identity provider, da, 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 da. and the ones that we created and we use are the groups. So it's called, sorry, group and username. And it shows exactly what value it's sending for this connection. And this one is the user. So the username is the user principal name as we configured and the group is the name of the group. So you can see here that we are getting the help desk role. If you go to Azure and send back to change it to group ID, you're going to see something more or less like this. And the file cannot do anything with this kind of information. So that's why we set for Azure to send our the, uh, as the group name instead of the group ID. So guys, thank you very much for watching the video. I hope it was interesting for you. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you thought the video was interesting. You can use the comments below if you have some questions for me. If you need some help configuring Global Protect with the Azure Authentication, this video here is a step-by-step -step process on how to configure it. Check it out and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.